Hey, welcome to Curate Online. It's so good to have you with us today. I love that there's people joining us right now from all around New Zealand and from different places around the world. And I just want to say welcome to Curate Online. In fact, wherever you're joining us from, why don't you get active in the chat? Let us know where you're joining from because we'd love to be praying over you, praying over your suburb, praying over your city or your town. And to those of you that aren't just watching Curate Online, but you're actually using it to create a Curate at Home experience, you've invited some friends or some family or whatever it is to gather together around this, thank you for opening up your home. Thank you for inviting people, putting on some food or whatever it is you're doing. And make sure you take some time to pray for each other today and just be the church for each other. Man, we just love that we're able to do this. And I want to start by saying if you live in Auckland and you're reaching, uh, you're you're watching in this way, we actually have our first uh, gathering back after this COVID season in our Curate Auckland facility this afternoon at four o'clock. There's going to be some worship, some coffee, some connection. Katie's going to be there teaching. And uh, if you live in the Auckland area, we'd love to get to know you. Come on down. Uh, check us out. It's at 44 George Street in Kingsland. Would love to meet you there. Uh, otherwise, we're in for a great day. Katie's bringing the word, continuing our series called I'm Ready. And uh, it's going to be an awesome, awesome message. But let's get ready for worship. Let's center our hearts on God. Let's get active. Let, let's make sure we're, we're, uh, we're active in this and we're leaning in and engaged in the chats. But let's pray uh, wherever you're at. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love and thank you for your presence. Thank you that uh, when we actually draw near to you, you draw near to us, God. And, And so God, today, right now, would we have an encounter with you as we worship you and meditate on you and center our hearts on you. In every home, wherever anybody is watching this and engaged in this, would you meet with them right where they're at? Would you meet their needs? Would you speak to them today? In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen, amen, amen. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praise as he hears. Faith. Oh, yeah. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear worship. He Faith. Oh, Jesus. Wake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud. Oh. Changes things, the sound of his people. 
Every me 
becomes a testimony until I see until I see your glory praise Jesus praise Jesus praise Jesus tops and every battle that we face becomes a testimony because you are good God you are good God you are good you are good your faithfulness is for always
everyone I hope you really enjoyed that beautiful worship I love that we can still do this together in this way in our homes and and I want to first of all um, start by thanking you for even having me in your home I know that it's no small thing and I take it as a real um, privilege to be able to do that and to be able to speak to you so thank you so much for having me And welcome to week two of our new series, which is called I'm Ready. And I know Joel did an amazing message last week called I'm Ready. And he had done a message on that it's our why that makes us ready. And if you missed that, I really want to encourage you um, to go back and have a listen because it was really, really great. You know, when we started talking about the series, I'm Ready, I started thinking about what being ready actually meant. And for me, I thought of people who are ready are people who are great at planning and execution, uh, which is not me. (laughs) People great at planning and execution, people that like, I love these people, they inspire me. They like think about everything that could happen and then they plan and like pack accordingly and they seem to be the people that um, they're ready for anything, you know? When I had little kids and when I had babies, I always refused to buy a nappy bag because I just think, just doesn't matter how pretty you try and make them, they just ruin everything. And so I didn't want a nappy bag. But then the problem was I just would have this big handbag without the pockets and and I'd be out with other mums and those that had their big nappy bags, it was like there was almost like an arrogant confidence about them. They're like, yeah, like anything could happen and I'm ready for it. Their kid would fall in the puddle and it's like, hey, spare change of clothes here in my nappy bag. We might be out for longer than, you know, we thought my bottle's gone cold, but they're like, hey, I've got a special like, you know, thermo pocket for my bottle. And, um, you know, then all of a sudden their their kid needs a nappy change and out comes out of this special little pocket, a, a foldable little change mat. And inside that was nappy bags and wipes and just like this confidence, like they were ready for anything with their well-stocked nappy bags. And, and you know, some that are like even on the next level of planning would even pack enough for their, you know, their special friends who would forget everything, aka me. And, you know, I always thought about that, like being ready as people who are great at planning and execution. But the more I've thought about it, the more I've realized that when it comes to being ready for God to do something in us and through us, that kind of planning, you know, though it may help, it actually doesn't have that much to do with it. And, you know, Joel spoke about last week that even like feeling ready, that our feelings don't really have anything to do with actually being ready for God to move in us and through us. And and I think it's the same that goes with the um, with our planning. And, you know, today I get to or I want to share about a way of living that that puts us in a constant state of readiness, a way of living that puts us in a constant state of readiness for God to move in us and through us by His Spirit um, to see His kingdom rule expand on this earth. And I think that it has to do with what remains in us. See, we live in a world where things come and they go. I, probably in your life, you, you know already that things come and they go. 
People come and they go, relationships come and they go, seasons come and they go, jobs come and go, our moods come and go, fads come and go, um, you know, lots of things come and go in our life. Some of our ideas and dreams even can come and go. And actually it's the things that remain in us through the seasons, through the coming and through the going. It's those things that actually have the power in our life. And it's what those things that remain in us through the seasons are, th are the things that can be counted on. And, you know, I think sadly, so many of us actually allow the wrong things to remain in us throughout the seasons. Like, I just think how many of us from one season to another allow something like self-doubt to be the thing that remains in our life as like a constant companion in one season and into the next. It's like that's the thing that remains in us. You know, there's something that I think is a real cultural problem at the moment, especially with our younger people, with our younger generation of my generation. And there's something that... I think is quite deeply rooted in us that we carry through all these seasons and it's envy. It's the spirit of envy. And I know that that's not a word that's thrown about, you know, all the time, but what envy actually is, it's wanting what someone else has. And I think our social media is just really amplifying this you know, putting what other people have like on a pedestal. And yes, like we're not perfect, right? We're all, we're all gonna have feelings of envy. That's like that twinge of pain when you see someone else's success. Um, you know, we're all gonna have moments of it, but you might, so you might not think you've got a problem with it, but if, all, if you're always wanting what someone else has, if from one season to the next, it's like you're never really satisfied with what you have, then the thing that's remaining in you is actually envy from one season to another. You know, sometimes we can allow a lack of ownership to be what remains in us from one season to another. And I want to put it out there, like if, if you have always got someone or something to blame for where you're at and what you're doing in your life, then you've got like this, this lack of ownership that, that you're allowing to remain in you from one season to the next. And, and it's a real blaming thing. You're blaming circumstances and blaming people. That's a real spirit of accusation. And, and how often do we allow these things that aren't of God to be the things that remain in us in and every season? And, and I want to encourage you and just empathize with you. Like we're, we're human, right? We're all going to have moments of feeling these things. But if they are the things that remain in us, then, then we've got to do things differently. And, and I would just really love if we were like a church community of Curate Online, if we could just go, actually on my watch, I may feel those things, but they will not be the things that remain in my life in and through every season. So, so, you know, like, so with the rest of the time that we have together, you know, I've talked about some of the things that shouldn't remain in us. I want to speak about the things that should remain in us, the things that we should make a permanent home for inside of us, because those things we weren't meant to make a permanent home for, the only one we're meant to make a permanent home in us is actually for the Holy Spirit. And so I'd love to just take the, the rest of our time to just talk about what should remain in us and what these things remaining in us has to do with readiness. So let's look at that. Let's go to John chapter 15, verse 1. And, and I'm going to read this out. And it, it's a bit of a long haul. Hopefully you're into it. I love the Bible. This is like beautiful imagery. So maybe like have, it, have a little thing, like try and picture this in your mind, this beautiful imagery. This is Jesus talking and he says, I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. Maybe someone needs to hear that today. You've already been pruned and you've been purified by this message that I've given you. He was speaking to his disciples then. So remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. 
Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burnt. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When, and notice it doesn't say if, but when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. And this brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me, so remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in His love. It's a lot of remaining. I have told you these things so that you'll be filled with my joy. I love that, filled with His joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment, because remember he said, to rem you remain in my love by fulfilling my commandments. And then he says, this is my commandment, love each other in the same way that I have loved you. For no greater love, there is no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friend. So, Here's Jesus and he's saying, would you remain in me? And then he actually shares what it means and how we can remain in him. And so let's, first of all, let's take a little look at that picture of him being the vine and us being the branches. Now, if we're the branches, he says, you cannot produce fruit unless you are connected to the vine. And we know this, right? Like if a branch is cut off, if it's broken, it can no longer produce fruit. Why? Because it's no longer getting its sustenance from the vine, from the source, where, where, where it all comes from. And, you know, it says in Exodus 16, verse four to five, and I love this, this is when the Israelites, they have just, uh, they've just been liberated from slavery in Egypt. They've crossed the Red Sea and now they're in the wilderness and they're hungry. And so in Exodus 16, verse four to five, it says, the Lord says to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. And the people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. So there was this manna and and when the, when, the, when the people of Israel would get up, there would be like a dew on the ground and that was this bread from heaven. And if they were to collect it, they would have enough for that day. But if they were to try and store it, it would actually spoil. Except for the day before Sabbath, it would keep for two days because God believes that rest is really important. Um, and so it was a real thing of trust. I mean, if God, he would have made it that we could, that they could have stored it and eaten it, you know, just not have to go out each day and get the food if that's what he wanted. But he was trying to, to teach his people to go out every day to seek him for provision, to trust him, to rely on him. And, you know, I just think it's the same goes for us with our spiritual food. You know, bread doesn't last a week. <laughs> And, you know, if we're going to go from one Sunday to another, just getting our spiritual food on a Sunday and not coming to Jesus every day, it's like we, He doesn't want us to live like that because that kind of bread spoils. I love bread and no good bread lasts a week. If bread lasts a week, it's packed full of preservatives. You don't want to eat that bread. No good bread lasts a week. You know, when you think about like if an opportunity came up, for an amazing adventure, like this spontaneous opportunity for this great act of adventure that day, who would be ready to go on that adventure? It wouldn't be those that hadn't eaten in a week. It would be those that had eaten that day. And you know, it's, it's, I just think that we have, we are ready to grab like divine opportunities when we are going to Him every day for our sustenance. You know, Jesus, he taught us how to pray and he says, give us today our daily bread. You know, it's, there's, no, there's not just another Monday when Jesus is concerned, like every day is a, is a day of mission for him. It's, it's not just another day. You know, like for me, I, this, 
we've just had like a really big season over lockdown. It's been, it's been really big for us. And the days that I haven't had enough to give are the days that I'm willing yesterday's bread to sustain me. And we were never created to live like that. We, you know, living on past spiritual experiences is insufficient food for a Christian. And so we, if we are the branch and he is the vine and we're connected to him, it's about going to him every day for our sons. It says in 1 Chronicles 16 verse 11, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. You know, his mercies are fresh every morning because we need his mercy every morning. So those who are ready to grab at any opportunity that God has for them are those that have eaten their daily bread, going to him every day. Secondly, He says, would you allow, he says, allow my word to remain in you. Those that remain in me, my word remains in them. My word remains in them. You know, in our life, a lot of words goes in, right? Like even right now, there are words coming at you. When you turn this off and you go about your life, you know, words are coming in from your family, from your job, whatever your life is, there's a lot that comes in. It's what, we, it's what remains that matters. It's what remains that matters. And, and unfortunately, we allow words of destruction to be the words that remain rather than the good, like the, the words that will bring life to us and life to our bones. You know, I love reading. I love learning. And I know when something has clicked inside of me. I know when something has like, it's stuck. And that is when I begin to speak it out in conversations, it's like, then I know that it's clicked when it becomes part of my confession. And so I can always tell someone who God's word remains in them. Those are the words that remain in them because it's what I hear. It's part of their confession. It's, it comes out in the way they live. It comes out in the way that they speak. You know, this word right here, this is like a foreign language to our culture today. It's a foreign language and we can't assume that we're going to be able to speak out the Word of God if we're not in it all of the time, learning about it. How do you learn a language? But you actually get in it. You you submerse yourself in it. You immerse yourself in it. And if we want to be people of God where He can just move in us and through us with with His message. If we want to be His mouthpiece, ready for Him to use us at any time, we've got to know and speak His language. It's got to be remain in us so much that it comes out as our confession. And thirdly, He talks about, He says, would you remain in my love? Would you remain in my love? You know, God is love. He is the source of love. Any love that we have is from Him. It's because He first loved us that we have any love to give at all. You know, just like there's no light on earth except the light that comes from the sun. You know, there's, there's no love in our hearts except the love that actually comes from Jesus Himself first. You know, our love for God can actually only flow from His fountain of infinite love. I've heard it said and I've seen memes around. I was just out shopping the other day and I saw it in a little framed, you know, meme quote. And it says that a successful marriage requires falling in love over and over again with the same person. And, you know, I I absolutely believe that's true. I know anyone who's been in a relationship for a long time will know that that a love left unkept, actually, it fades, it, it becomes familiar, it can lose its feeling, can lose its depth. And, you know, sometimes loving the people that you're supposed to love can be really hard. Like, you know, like sometimes, like our loved ones, they're just really easy to love. You know, they're just being wonderful, so easy to love. And other times they're not so easy to love. It's like it requires a whole lot more from us. And maybe you're feeling that now you're like, man, like with my relationships, I, I, I do love them, but I'm struggling to like have enough love inside of me to, when they're being difficult, when it's, when it's difficult. I'm struggling to have enough in me to be able to give to them. And, and I just wanted to encourage you and challenge you. You're actually not going to be able to muster it up in the rocky soil that is in your heart. But if you would rediscover your love for God, 
or maybe it's discovering a love for Jesus for the first time. If you were to do that, if you were to begin to drink from his fountain of this very real and raw love that that never runs out and never runs dry, then you're going to find yourself filled from him and be able to have enough to give out. And, And it shouldn't be difficult because, you know, the people in our life, they're annoying, they're not perfect, but he's perfect. Um, And, you know, the ones who are ready in any moment to bring a little bit of heaven to earth, like the ones that are ready to bring a little bit of heaven into their home, to bring a little bit of heaven into their relationships, to bring a little bit of heaven into their workplace and into their school are the ones that are full of heaven's rule, which is love. He says that to sum up all of his commandments is Love, And if we were to just love God and love each other, that that would be it. So if we're going to be ready to bring heaven to earth, we have to be full of his love. And this one is not from this verse, but I've been just feeling so pulled to talk about it. And God's been really speaking to me about it. And it's about remaining in the present, remaining in the present. And, you know, that's that's easier said than done. Like even as I was just about to get up here and and it takes a lot to kind of birth a message really. And and I was thinking, I just kind of want to get this done and then afterwards I'll I'll be relaxed and and, and then I would have just had it done. You know, I would have poured it out and then I was like, actually, I don't want to wish this away, but I want to be fully present in it because I get to do this. You know, God is speaking through me now. I get to open His Word. And, you know, even right now, like those of you who are ready, and not those of you who are thinking about yesterday. Those of you who are thinking about the weekend, about what just happened, maybe about dwelling on things of the past, or those of you who are thinking about everything you have to do tomorrow, all the things you've got to do, or thinking way ahead into your future, wishing away today. I'll tell you what, the ones who are ready are not the ones dwelling on the past, and it's not the ones with their head in the future. It's the ones who have their eyes up, who are present in the moment, and it's easier said than done. And so, you know, I really believe that God is calling us, like if we're going to be ready, we need to choose to remain in the present. And the pull is to drift either way. And so we must choose to remain. We must choose to remain. Eyes up, tuned in. You know, I know like when we are gathering together as groups or even as you're gathering together as a, in, in homes, you know, if the Holy Spirit was to start moving in your home right now, I don't know if you're on your own or if there's a few of you there, if the Holy Spirit was to start moving, I tell you the one that is ready to kind of jump in on that, the one that's like going, oh, I think something's happening there. I'm going to start to pray into that is the one who is present. It's not the one thinking about tomorrow. It's not the one thinking about yesterday, but it's the one who has their eyes up, who is present, who's saying, God, I'm here. Like I may not want to be here because this isn't the situation. Like if I could write my life, Lord, I probably wouldn't have written it like this. I probably wouldn't still be in this season. Actually, I'd be in the next season if it was up to me. But Lord, I'll be present in today, even though I'd rather not. And it's those that are present who are ready for God to move in them and through them. And and I think that those people are actually the catalyst for what God wants to do. See, I know in in a room like this, I'm I'm in the room right now in our Mount Maunganui campus where where we meet together on a Sunday. Last Sunday was our first one. And, and I know that those that are like the catalyst for God to move are those that are present and they start to sense something. And so they jump on it and then it starts catching and others go, oh, hang on a moment, they're feeling something. And so I'm gonna jump in on it. And you know, you can be a real leader in your world by just simply being present, by simply being present. In 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2, it says, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of his salvation. I want to encourage you. Yes, we can gain some perspective from the past, and that's a beautiful thing to do. Yes, we should always have a hope and a vision for the future. That's really healthy. We've got to know where we're heading. We've got to know where we're going. But could you do better at being present? 
Is God calling you to be awake? Because, you know, tomorrow is not just another day. It's a day that everything could change for someone if your eyes were up, if your heart was open for God to be able to move through you. And so I've said a lot of things. What have I said? I've said that we are to, we are to remain Like we are to remain connected to Him. So getting our daily bread from Him, to remain drawing our our sustenance from Him, going to Him on the daily. It's those that eat every day that are those that are ready for any opportunity that might come up. We are to allow His Word to remain in us. Those that are ready to speak the message of Jesus, to have a response in our, in our hurting and broken world, those ready to bring truth are those who have God's Word in us, allowing His Word to remain in us. Thirdly was to remain in His love. You know, if we want to bring more heaven to earth, we need to have heaven inside of us and the rule of heaven, the rule of the kingdom, the, the, the thing that sums up all of the commandments is love, to love God and to love each other. If you need a little bit more of, a little more of heaven in your home, well, go to God for a little bit more love, for a lot more love, drink from His fountain, and you're going to see more of heaven in your home. And finally, those that remain in the present are ready for God to use them in a powerful way, in an everyday way, in a spectacular way, in an ordinary way, all kinds of ways, it's a divine way, and it's a truly beautiful thing. And so to remain in God, remain in Him, and Maybe you're watching this and, and you're like, well, Katie, this is actually super foreign to me. I, 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 maybe I don't have a relationship with Jesus. Or maybe you're thinking, how can I remain in Him if like, I'm not perfect? You might be thinking, you know, I've got things that I struggle with. I'm, I'm sinful. There's, there's things that I do that I know God doesn't like. And so how can I, can rem- how can I remain in Him? Surely, surely I'm not good enough. And If you haven't heard the message of Jesus, I I want to tell you the message of Jesus this morning is that He loves you just where you're at, that you can find acceptance just where you're at, that if you were to just believe in Jesus and and to, to believe in Him as your Lord and Savior and invite Him into your life, then what happens is His perfection, His righteousness, He actually gives to you so that you, just as you are, can remain in Him as the branch connected to the vine with all always enough. And it's the most beautiful, beautiful thing. And so if that's you, I want to invite you this morning to choose to begin a relationship with Jesus. Um, I know that there's a little um, a little button that's going to come up that says to a little notification that says that you can raise your hand and would love for you to reach out. You can reach out to us on the chat or the curatechurch.com slash connect because we'd love to connect with you in this journey. And, and why don't I just pray for you now and you can join in on this prayer. And if you're making that decision for the first this time that is just just beautiful when we remain in Jesus man he, he talks about this fruit that will come from our life and the kind of fruit that would come from our life is like things like patience and goodness and self-control and love and and all of the things that make us like just this whole and beautiful human being and so why don't I just pray for you now uh, Heavenly Father Lord, I thank you for everybody who is making that decision for the first time or for a first time in a long time to believe in you. And if that's you, would you just repeat after me and just say, Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus. I surrender to you. I give you my life. Would you fill me with your spirit? Would you make me new? Teach me to live in your ways. Thank you for the righteousness that you have given me. From today, I live for you. Amen. Awesome. I want to thank everybody for for tuning in today. It's so amazing to have you as part of our Curate Online family. If there was anything that came up, you want prayer with anything, we'd love to pray for you. But remain, remain, remain when we remain, we remain ready when we remain in Jesus. Have the most amazing week. Wow, wow, wow. Wasn't that an awesome message from Katie? And I just want to start by saying congratulations to anybody who made a decision today 
to give their heart to Jesus, to invite Him into their life. That is literally the best decision you could ever make in your life. It's just the starting place, but it's the best decision. You are saved. You got a God who loves you. You got an eternal hope. It's very, very exciting. But we would love to help you turn that decision into a whole new direction for your life. So why don't you reach out to us? Let us know you've made that decision. We'd love to send you a Bible. A pastor would love to get in touch with you. In fact, there's a team available to pray with you right now if you feel comfortable with that. So just reach out on the chats or go to curatechurch.com slash connect and let us know you made that decision. And for everybody watching today, if we don't know you yet, we'd love to get to know you. So why don't you reach out on the chats or reach out through curatechurch.com slash connect. Thank you to everybody who's helping us make a difference. I know so many people who watch online uh, are actually beginning to honor God through their finances as this is their church. And uh, we just thank you so much for that. And if you want to know more about getting on that generosity journey and helping us reach people, visit curatechurch.com slash give. Otherwise, I pray that you would have an awesome rest of the week. If you're in Auckland, we'll see you this afternoon. Uh, make sure you share today with your friends. Uh, let people know about it. But we love you. We're praying for you. And uh, we're actually excited to next week introduce you to our new online pastor. So we'll see you back here next week. It's going to be fantastic.